When looking for the king of podcasts, you're at the wrong channel. Well, excuse me! Looking for good ideas for life? You're far from good hands. Hey, bud, what's your problem? If you think the listener is always right, you're far from the right place. Out of order! Even in the future, nothing works! Hosted by a Northeasterner by birth, but a rebel by choice. Are you threatening me? If you want a host that floats between love and madness, and we know the night is always gonna be here anyway. Thinking of you's working up my appetite, looking forward to a little afternoon delight. Then play on and listen to Crazy Train Radio. All right, guys, uh, listen to the blues riff and B. Watch me for the changes and try and keep up, okay? Warning, creators of this game do understand the subject matter may be offensive to some, but they do honor the families and people that have been affected by these real life tragedies that these individuals have caused. Wanna play a game? Oh yeah! Lover of true crime? Yes, yes, yes. Well, we got an interesting game for you to check out. Wow. With the mashup of influences such as horror movies, collecting cards, and RPGs. What? Led to giving birth to an incredible creation of this game. Killers, the card game. You are all my children now. This game is a collectible trading card game featuring some of the most infamous killers with tidbits of trivia on the back of each card to help you learn some insight to each criminal. Who the hell are you? Let's not forget, during the game, cops will be chasing you and these criminals. I'm a cop, you idiot! However, check out their website listed through all social media today, which can be found under Killers, the card game. Am I on the internet? I want to play a game. Hi, I'm Jennifer Alvarado, and you are listening to Crazy Train Radio. Hey folks, it's your least favorite host in the podcast world, Croc, Jonathan Steele. Boy, do we have a good one for you today. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this next guest is an international recording artist from the East Coast, and particularly Vail, North Carolina. She has amassed over a million, yes, one million streams on Spotify alone. Some of her music includes Playing With Fire and a country pop EP entitled Songbird Part 1. Let's welcome Jennifer Alvarado. Jennifer, how are you? I'm great. I hope you are. Uh, making the best <laughs> we can. That's all we can do. Okay. So it was a little unique for me. And obviously, I don't tend to schedule this far out, but I heard of Miss Jennifer, I guess about two months or so ago. And... Mm-hmm decided to schedule this out in which obviously people who know know i had to make a quick trip to the west coast so we had to bump this back but here we are so thank you for being accommodating with the change in my schedule yeah i mean thanks for accommodating me because i had schedule changes too so i think it was a it was a joint effort at this point but hey, we're here and we're getting things done. So first and foremost, 
in your neck of the woods, mm-hmm. what kind of reaction do you have for everything you've done and accomplished so far? Because obviously, if I'm wrong, Vail is a small country little town in North Carolina there. So obviously, people look for the nuggets or hey, I got over a million streams, or I got this, I did this, you know, the pat on the back. So what's it like for you locally, for you, with everything you've accomplished? Um, I mean, honestly, it, it, people people don't get me wrong. People are, are very kind and nice, and, and I have a lot of supporters. Um, but also, people don't really care about that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, it, you know, everyday life is way more um, important than those kind of things. And so like, I have honestly found probably more, I guess, industry support and just support of my, like with my peers, um, with people in Nashville, people that are trying to strive for the same things um, and chase after the same dreams. I mean, music is not really a, people get it here. But it, at, at the end of the day, like, it's still very much kind of a hobby or a pipe dream or something like that. So while they're proud of you, it's like, okay, like, you kind of have that bless her heart kind of mentality of like, one day she's going to get a real job. And, you know, I love how they say that in the South. It's bless her heart when they're really yeah. taking jabs at you. Well, and I don't, you know, I, I will say that a lot of people, like I have so many people that support me and come out and are so kind and, and they do, they show support, but they show support in their own way. Um, and so I have found support, I guess, with music, with streaming, with buying records and, and coming to shows. Like I have seen that more outside of this area, to be honest. Um, I have my, my faithful few or whatever that, you know, kind of come to everything. And then there's um, the one-offs and and I'm happy with all of it. Um, but it is, it, it's different as far as like around here, people have their lives. And honestly, I think a lot of times people are like, well, we'll just catch her at the next one or we'll just catch her on, on Sunday at church and say hi, or you know what I mean? Like, so it's mm-hmm. just, it's just different. Yeah, Exactly. Well, speaking of that, and full disclosure, which I'd like to do here, yeah, I actually was doing some last-minute prep, and you and me actually talked about this uh, mm-hmm. via Facebook and stuff, so yeah. I guess that I don't mind throwing this out there, and it could okay. lead to a couple other things, questions or whatnot, mm-hmm. but it clicked for me, and I listened to another conversation, and you were talking about your religious background as far as gospel and singing in church and things like that. And I'm like, personally, cause I'm very, I don't know how to put this off the cuff and yeah. different things like that, but obviously show respect to everybody. So I had yeah. asked Jennifer, I said, a, hey, uh, I just heard X, Y, and Z. It was nothing negative. She was saying folks, it was nothing like that in the conversation I was listening to. But I said, hey, listen, because some I had one person in 11 years complain mm-hmm. about they did the show, then yeah. turned around and complained. So it's like, let me ask Jennifer her thoughts, see where her head's at yeah. with everything. And Jennifer was like, oh, I'm cool. We're, you're great. I get it. I appreciate yeah. you asking. And I was like, okay. It was like, you know, because I, I didn't want to have her come back and go what the hell did you do that for? You know, kind of, but, you know, I appreciate that. And the candor, it was cool, but I wanted to, I was curious to know where did, was it the church and stuff that got you singing and performing music or, and then you decided to make the change in 2020. So there's a lot there, I know, but. So yes and no. Um, I have always loved music um, and I wanted to be a country artist from probably the age of seven or eight because that's what I knew like that that's what I wanted to do and plus like I listened to Celine Dion and Whitney Houston and all these other vocalists and I was like that's what I want to do like at one point I wanted to go 
play in Las Vegas. So, I mean, you know. There's still know. time for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so I, like, I, I was all over the board as far as what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to sing. Um, now, for me, yes, getting involved in church was how I started leading worship. It's how I started leading really in general and learning how to work with a band and learning um, just how to even stage presence, you know, getting up there, getting past the nerves, because I struggled with performance anxiety for years to the point that I would get up to do anything and not be able to get words out, not be able to do anything. Um, and it would just be a cluster. Um, and so I very much think that foundation um, for helping me through through all that and and kind of, you know, embracing me and giving me that support. Now I will say, so that's sort of the trajectory that I was on was I, I was going to be a worship leader. I, I released a contemporary Christian album back in 2015. That was the very first album I released. Um, and then I went on to work on several worship projects with the church I was at at the time. And uh, that was my, I guess, exposure to the music industry um, and what it was about. And then you know, some things did occur um, with just ministry in general. And I realized that I I wasn't sure, even though I'm still a worship pastor, actually, um, and still lead worship, um, I, I realized that there was some things in music that I wanted to do um, and, and just 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 different path that I wanted to sort of figure out. Um, that I couldn't um, in that environment because it just was not at that point in time a healthy place for me to be. And so whether I, I don't want to say luckily, but for me, because of, of the pandemic, um, it kind of got me out of an environment for a while where there wasn't this constant like criticism coming at me that made me fear everything I was doing. So I did feel like I could finally put the secular stuff out and it not come back to bite me in the butt, essentially. Um, so that's that's sort of how that came about. And because I had basically shelved my own stuff, like I was just like, you know, this is a pipe dream. This needs to just I can do this as a hobby and this is all this is ever going to be because I was sort of like beaten down um, with, with my own stuff and, and with criticism and stuff like that, that I was afraid to pursue it because I thought if, if I can't do it here, how can I possibly do it over here? Um, And that's, that's not true. And I'm not saying that every, church environments like that. I'm because it's not. I mean, every every place you go is different. Um, but that was just a situation that I ran into. And so my outlet was being able to put out the secular stuff and do something different for a while. And it happened to work. Well two questions there. And obviously, you know, just because you have a bad section here. In this part of your life, does it mean it will affect Correct. these other departments? But what is a worship pastor? And with that all being what you just said, how has that evolved your writing and improved your um, writing? Honestly, for me, my faith is probably what kept me going. Um, that didn't just make me quit altogether because mm -hmm. I thought... I just thought, you know, things happen in our life that we either become better from it or we become bitter. And a lot of people become bitter and they shut it down and they're just like, I'm done. I'm done with it all. And there was a point in time that I thought with music, I'm done. I'm going to just quit all of it because all of it sucks. <laughs> and that's not true. Um, and it wasn't true, but it's what you kind of go to. And so for me, it was like, you know what, I'm going to get better at my craft. I'm going to get better at writing. I'm going to pursue this. And 
I'm not going to listen to everything that's going on over here and all the critics. Like I'm, I know that there's a reason I'm passionate about this and I feel like there's a purpose in it and therefore I'm going to keep going. And I don't know for me personally, I don't know that I would have been able to do that without my faith because you know, you are told as a Christian that you're going to, you're going to have trials and tribulations and that even in that's life. Yeah, it is. And, and, but I think a lot of times we blame um, every, everybody, everything, instead of just realizing that that is life and you've got to move forward. And that by no means is saying like, it's okay for people to hurt you. That's not what I'm saying. Like that, that's not okay. And I think that that's what I had to learn too, was that it's not okay. Whether it's in church, whether it's at the bar downtown, like whatever, like it's not okay to constantly put yourself in a place where you're being hurt and feel rejected and feel um, like a less than, like, I I don't believe God wants you to be that way or to to live that way. Um, And so that was a thing that I had to deal with was like, just because I don't fit here doesn't mean that I'm not going to fit anywhere. It doesn't mean that I'm no good for anything. And so those those were just things that I had to process and, and work through. And honestly, I think that that's that is one thing that foundationally, because of my faith, it helped me to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and as far as the worship pastor thing, like I still so essentially, what is that? so so essentially um, it means that I am able to give a message um, because I've done like uh, I don't even know what it's called at the moment I've I've trained to be a speaker and not that testimony kind of stuff. and stuff or like- uh testimony but also lessons so like I, I I give a message every once in a while at church um the other thing is I'm responsible for the music so I'm responsible for the worship service part as far as the music is concerned as far as the choir that kind of thing I I am the administrative person for all of that essentially now with everything done so far recording wise and such i'd like to put at least one thing in so what would we your suggestion what do we put here Hmm. i would say probably filthy water okay let's go ahead and do that okay time you talk to me light a match and watch it burn soon the table's gonna turn you think you are the man talking with your dirty hands but come home and make it right the things you took away in spite Sing. It's a- 
coming out of that is, you know, there's so many to list the awards you've been nominated for and at both as a writer, but also sung, you know, what, who's been major influences for you so far? Uh, our, the awards I will list obviously, but yeah, I guess um, what, what, who's been major influence for you? Writing wise, I, I mean, honestly, I have to give props to Taylor Swift, give or take. I know people are like, whatever, but I mean, she is a phenomenal writer um, and she's able to kind of change what she's doing. But uh, Patty Griffin has been a huge influence writing wise. Um, She's able to state things in such a way that it just leaves you kind of scratching your head. Like, why didn't I think of that? Um, Business wise, Reba McIntyre was a huge influence on me. Um, So brilliant, that woman. Yeah. And, and I mean, she does everything. And so, and, and I think with her, because she does everything, you kind of, you learn the business side of it and you see the grit and the termination that she has to like, I guess, prove her herself into everything. And um, so that was a huge influence and has been a huge influence continues to be Um, singing wise uh, on and style wise. I'm all over the place. Tom Petty, the Eagles. Um, Love me, the Eagles. Morris, uh, yeah. Um, Alanis Morissette, Nirvana. Um, I was huge into grunge. I was, you know, I'm still, I still like the whole grunge thing. Um, but, you know, Soundgarden. I'm trying to think of some other just sounds. And, Pearl and, Jam, would you say, fits in there? Uh, I like some of their stuff, but I was never like really... I, I never really just like connected with them, but I do like some of their stuff. Um, I was definitely more Nirvana um, and Soundgarden of this and even live like that. Those were more of the sounds that I gravitated toward. Um, but I mean, even like Whitney Houston, Gloria Estefan, Richard Marks, like I'm, you know, Chicago. Um, yeah. I mean, I was all over the place because my mom loved, the top 40 stuff. Um, and then my grandparents were very much into traditional country and nineties country. So nineties country was a huge influence on me. Dina Carter, those that, you know, are the singer songwriter, quintessential singer songwriters. Um, and then, you know, I got into Christian music. I got into Christian bands and stuff like that. As I, as I started leading worship, but even when I was taking like, cause I, I took voice lessons to try to get through my performance anxiety. So I started listening to, you know, classical and, and opera and all of that. So like all of it has kind of meshed in there at some point. Yeah. Cause you can always take a nugget from something and how can you I can. apply that to me? Yes. And I, I do that even with people I meet still. I mean, the thing is like, I, I truly believe everybody you meet is is sent for a reason and it either teaches you what you want to do or what you don't want to do. (laughs) Like you learn something from them. It might not be the best of things, but you learn something. Yeah. It's funny. It's are your eyes and ears open to pick up on that the right way, wrong way. Uh, The other thing I wanted to bring up curious, what can you tell me about that? So that is a song about, um, Basically, just you meet somebody, whether it be a friend, whether it be a coworker, whatever. And there's just the, there's that initial spark. There's that curiosity that comes with them. And you're wanting to know them more. You're wanting to kind of explore that whole situation. But at the same time, there's a lot of fear that's built into that because being vulnerable and possibly being rejected, like we don't like that as humans. And, uh, <laughs> So it's just that natural curiosity that comes from wanting to meet somebody and talk to them and get to know them um, and learn everything about them. But at the same time, you're kind of, you know, holding them back. like mm, And all fish. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, my dog is losing his mind. Somebody, <laughs> I, don't know, I think my husband just got home or something. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, never mind. We'll, we'll leave that alone. But <laughs> Okay. Uh, why don't we go ahead and put for the heck of it why don't we put curious in here too okay 
I can see you looking at me from across the room With every single glance I get a little more confused You shouldn't want me, I shouldn't want you All of our reasons, we follow the rules But all I keep dreaming about is me with you question what's next what are what are our goals hmm okay that's a very loaded question um as far as goals I think it's just to keep growing to keep getting better at this whether it be writing I do want a publishing deal at some time for writing um I, I just I don't know that I necessarily want a record deal um because I really do want to keep kind of I, I want to keep hands on my music, if that makes sense. I want to be does. able to decide what I'm doing and not necessarily be slave to somebody else. Um, so I, I'm not really pushing for that, but I do, I would like to have a publishing deal at some point just for writing, just because I feel like it opens up a whole other network of, of being able to work with other artists, other producers, other writers, um, that I wouldn't necessarily have on my own. Um, as far as coming up, I have a new EP coming out on July 24th. It's the second part of the Songbird Project. So it kind of completes the whole story. Um, and I just released a new single called Trigger Warning back on uh, July 7th. So kind of in the midst of still promoting that one. Um, but I'm actually getting ready to go back into the studio uh, probably next week. and get started and kind of finish a Christmas EP that's coming out in November. And uh, um, also I've, I 
finished writing another project, but we haven't started recording it yet. So, and that's going to be more kind of stripped down uh, 90s, early 2000 country sound, um, just because that's really what speaks to me and what really had an influence on me and my music. And it just, it would be nice to kind of reminisce and go back to that style for a little bit. It makes me feel old that you say that all the way back in the 90s and early 2000s, <laughs> right? <laughs> I know. It makes me feel old. Back, back, in, a, back in a good old day. Back in the day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Jennifer, thank you. Thank you. Hey there, Friday fans. We know how much you enjoy the movies. Enjoy grabbing your Friday merchandise and interacting with the Friday family, whether it be at conventions or during our particular watch-alongs. Well, when you're looking to get yourself masks, why not check out our friends over at Camp Blood Customs out of New York State and order your specific custom mask from any of the films. All orders are made specifically. Your needs and wants are. Make sure you find Camp Blood Customs on Facebook, Instagram, and all over social media and order yours today. Hey, I'm Casey Hartnett from Terrifier 2, and you're listening to Crazy Train Radio.